Hey everyone, Mark Propilio with Hockey Ministries International, bringing you another video chapel today. You know, it's interesting, Jesus in, in the Gospels, uh, very often when he approached or was approached by somebody with a disease or some sort of ailment, he would say to them, what do you want me to do for you? I mean, it's sort of a strange question, like the blind guys, they're calling out to him, have mercy on us, and he says, what do you want uh, me to do for you guys? And they're like, uh, we'd like to see, you know, because we're blind and all. Um, it's interesting that he always, he, he sort of put it on the, uh, on the person, like, what do you, what exactly do you want? What are you looking for? What are you coming to me for? And there's another place when, uh, he goes to a guy who's been an invalid for many, many years. And he says, do you want to be healed? Uh, yeah, I, I would think, but it's a great question. Do you really want to be healed? And our special guest today, Sid Graham, the chaplain for the Carolina Hurricanes, is going to look into the scriptures and ask us that exact question. Do we really want to be healed? It's a great question. And as we look into the scriptures, I think we're going to get a great answer. So uh, pay attention and take it away, Sid. Thanks, Mark. As Mark said, my name is Sid Graham, the chaplain for the Carolina Hurricanes. And I just wanted to share a, a brief devotional with you today. Something I learned on a uh, trip that we recently had, my wife and I did uh, with our church in Israel back in uh, March before the <clears throat> everything really broke loose with the coronavirus. Um, but anyway, on, on our stop, on some of our stops, uh, one of our stops, we stopped at the pools of Bethesda and it was in Jerusalem there. And uh, our pastor gave us uh, basically a brief devotional while we were overlooking the old pools and it really hit home for me and I'm hoping it will be for you or will for you as well today. But um, I just want to ask you a question first. Uh, have you ever heard that term, curiosity killed the cat? Well, is curiosity always a bad thing? So sometimes we really need to be curious and ask ourselves questions. And sometimes when we ask questions, um, we learn a lot about ourselves. And there were a couple people that uh, asked questions many, many years ago. And one of them was the guy who cut down a fir tree and started studying the tar inside of it and developed rosin. And we use those things today for baseball pitchers use the rosin and um, soda companies use rosin and there's all kinds of uses. And what about the guy who started looking at the uh, entrails of a cat and they developed stitches? I'm sure some of you are familiar with those as well. Uh, and you got to ask yourself at some point, uh, there was probably a wife urging these guys to go some, do, do something useful with their lives, right? Um, so, but today we're going to ask ourselves a couple questions, and uh, we're going to do, uh, do something with that by looking at uh, John. We're going to look at John 5, 1 through 7. Uh, it's, it's about the healing pools uh, of uh, Bethesda. After this, there was a feast of Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which means house of mercy, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and the paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. Uh, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there for a very long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Well, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am going, another steps in before me. So if you look at if you're looking at a Bible and you see verse four, there's nothing there. There's actually a footnote though that I found, and it just briefly explains what's going on. They were waiting at these pools, and when the pool water would be stirred up, that's when they felt that an angel had come down and stirred the water. Um, and that's when the next person that got in would be healed. So they were all waiting for that water to be stirred, and they would jump in. Well, this poor guy, every time he tried to get uh, jump in first, somebody would beat him to it. So that's what he was basically saying. Well, I, I've tried. I can't get healed. Um, so if you think about this, this lame man, imagine his situation. He's been lame for 38 years. So he's made friends with all the other invalids uh, that lived in that area, that basically was, was his community. That was his social circle. Um, do you think that he was known uh, for being an invalid for 38 years and he was probably, probably receiving free gifts and probably some sympathy from the local folks there? 
Um, do you think that if all of a sudden he was healed, that his life would dramatically change? That every day when he woke up, he would usually go down there, he would hang out with these people, and they all knew each other. And if he was healed and they weren't, he would probably be excommunicated from that. His life was going to change if he was healed. Um, don't you think his life would be completely turned upside down? Do you think that everyone in that city knew he was an invalid and had been for 38 years? This was the opportunity, an opportunity for Jesus to show his power. Everybody knew this guy was an invalid. And for Jesus to heal him just by his words, it would have a huge impact and show how much power Jesus really had. So the question is, did the lame man really want life change? This was a free gift from Jesus. So we have to ask ourselves the same thing. Do we really want what Jesus is offering? Do we really want life change? Our world would be turned upside down. So what does that look like? Well, we can be pretty comfortable in our lives. There's no doubt. We can be relaxed with our reality and we can find comfort in our own crazy. Uh, we can be a little soft with our sin and we can delight in our drama. So what would this change mean for us as individuals? Um, if you think about who else has had life change like this, if you think about David, uh, David went from a shepherd boy to a king. In Moses, Moses went from uh, basically the grandson of Pharaoh and having a very posh lifestyle to one of being a slave and, and getting his people out of Egypt. Quite a, quite a life change, quite a uh, change in, in, in lifestyle, is, I'd say, as well. Um, <clears throat> If you think about it too, in John 8, the woman uh, who was the adulteress, uh, she was about to be stoned. And all Jesus had to do was, was say one thing to all the people ready to stone her. Do you remember what that was? I bet you do. But he did say to her, he said to her, Jesus said, go and sin no more. He expected a change of her life for that. So why doesn't the lame man, getting back to the lame man, why doesn't he just say, he, when Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? Yes, I want to be healed. It's been 38 years. I definitely want to be healed. Um, so why didn't he just say yes? But what did he do? If you notice, he made excuses. He said, the sick man answered him in John 5, 7, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm going, another one steps down before me. He doesn't say yes. He just starts making excuses. So... What does life change look like for you? What are some of the things you'd have to give up if you really wanted that life change? And what are the, some of the things that you'd gain from that life change? Uh, the first question was, do you really want what Jesus is offering you? Second question is, what are we changed for? John Piper talks about healed for holiness. We aren't supposed to take this gift that Jesus is offering us for granted. He paid a huge price for that, a very painful price. He gave up everything. Uh, fortunately, when he died, he rose again. He conquered death. But he paid a price for it. And he doesn't want us to take that lightly. Um, Jesus wants us to have a changed life, one that glorifies the Lord. Jesus actually gives this man a warning in verse 14, the lame man. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. So another thing we'll look at real quick in this verse is, is they were all about legalism. Jesus said to him, Get up, take your bed, and walk. And at once this man was healed, and he took his bed up and he walked. Problem was, it was on the Sabbath. And guess what? The, the religious elite were very upset about that fact. He said, Who told you to take up your mat? That was the question from the elite. And you want to go, really? I mean, the man was a lame for 38 years and that's all you're worried about? Who really cares about the mat? We care more about looking good and, 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 and what things look like and what we look like sometimes. And we get caught up in the legalism of all of it. But when you think about it, Jesus really just wants our heart. That's what he's concerned about. He's after our hearts. He wants change in our lives, but he's after our heart and a relationship with us. 
We were made whole to be holy, and we were made whole by the death on the cross. Holy is mentioned 600 times in the Bible. Uh, Holy Bible, holy land, holy God, holy people, right? Holy means to be set apart, to look different. If we claim to be a Christian, do we look set apart? Do we look different from everyone else? Our holiness means a new relationship with sin. It means a changed life. Think about what Jesus said in John 13, 35. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I got to tell you, that's one of the hardest things for me. There are a lot of unlovable people out there, and I can get caught up in, in finding ways not to love them. But guess what? I am just as unlovable. The coronavirus has caused a lot of fortunes to turn into rubble. But if you're concerned about your fortunes instead of your faith, you're going to find that there are a lot of things that are going to be on shaky ground. Um, We can get caught up in our health and finding confidence in that. Trust me, that can turn on a dime as well. That can be very quickly uh, changed overnight in a millisecond. The big question is, do we really want what the Lord is offering? If so, it should rock our world and cause us to be different, to look different, and to think different. Ask yourselves, as I recently have here, and especially when I came back from that that Israel trip, is like, do I want to ride the fence on my faith, or why do I want to be all in? Ask yourselves that. Thank you, Mark, and I uh, hope to see you next time. Well, thanks so much, Sid. A great word and a great question to us. Do we really want what Jesus is offering, because here's the deal. We, we, we sort of want a Band-Aid. We want a little bit. We want a little bit of God juice. We want a little bit of heaven in our life. We want a little bit, you know, tank us up a little bit. Just, you know, just, just put it right to the top. But what Jesus offers is life changing. It's life altering. When we come to him, we will never be the same. And so he asks us, do you really want to be healed. Do you really want what Jesus is offering? I want to suggest that most people I encounter don't. Again, they they, they want a little lucky rabbit's foot. They want a little, they want a little heaven juice. But do they really want what Jesus is offering? Because Jesus promises to give us way more than we ever thought. He'll also require way more than we ever intended. So he pauses and says, Do you really want what I'm going to give you? It's a great question uh, for the man at the pool of Bethesda. It's a great message for us. Great question to ponder. And I pray that the answer would be yes. In fact, pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, give us the courage to accept all that Jesus offers. We confess we come to you for a Band-Aid, for just a little, uh, you know, fill the tank, just top it off. But you want to change us completely, eternally, and significantly. Lord, help us to have the courage to follow you wherever you lead. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again, Sid, and uh, thanks for everyone who watched this. We'll see you next time.